No better way to start out the year than in the house of the Lord. Praise God. Appreciate being able to come this morning to speak to you. Uh, let me say before we start this morning, appreciate all that the church has done for us uh, financially, physically, food, everything that's been done. We we appreciate it. It's been a blessing. Thank you. And <clears throat> just thank the Lord. <clears throat> thank the Lord for His blessings. Uh, he's so good, so wonderful to us. Sorry that brother. Danny is sick, not able to be here this morning, and uh, he called yesterday and asked if I could fill in for him, so I think it was yesterday morning, uh, but I tell you what, when you stay at home every day, uh, your days begin to run together, uh, you know, it's hard to keep up with what day it is, but thank the Lord for this opportunity, and I uh, pray that you'll be blessed this morning. Uh, our thought for this morning is a cure for a troubled world. Oh, yes. And I'm sure this morning, as we look across the congregation, uh, you could probably raise your hand and say, Yes, I've got some troubles. I, I don't, I think everybody probably here this morning, there's something, you know, uh, yours may be different from somebody else, but. Uh, we're living in a world today that's full of trouble. We're living in a day that uh, there's so much going on and so much is happening in our, in our life. Uh, we're seeing things that we have never seen before. And we know that we're in the last days, in the last times that the Bible speaks about. I really believe it with all my heart. Uh, you know, I don't know how long we've got. You know, we... Back when we thought two th year 2000 was fixing to come in, we thought, well, that's it, probably. You know, it wouldn't be that much longer. Well, here we are, fixing to move into the year 2015. The Lord still hasn't come, but He's coming. Amen. He's coming. His Word is true. He's coming. Amen. And He's coming back for those who are looking, those who are watching and waiting, those who are living a godly life. There's so many people this morning that's living an ungodly life. There's a lot of folks in the church today that think they're ready, but they're not ready. Uh, if there's sin in your life, you need to get it out. You need to repent. You need to call upon the Lord. Every day, we need to call upon the Lord and say, Lord, if there's anything in my life, anything that would hinder me from going to heaven, forgive me, cleanse me, help me to be ready. You know, to miss heaven, my, it'd be awful. To think about spending eternity in hell. There's so many people this morning, church, we, we don't really realize it. We come in contact with people every day who is not ready. And we need to be a witness and we need to be a light. We need to be uh, living for the Lord. And You know, a lot of times you may, may not be able to say much, but just the light that you live, the light that shines forth from your light can shine into somebody's heart. You know, I often think about Sister Darcy. She's been a soul winner. Her desire is to win souls to the Lord. She may not be able to do like she once did, but she still is serving the Lord. Still. And, and there's others here this morning, but you know, thank the Lord for each one this morning. If you're serving the Lord, <clears throat> you've got something this morning to be thankful for. Amen. Because we've got a better place to go. And, I, and I'm looking forward to that more every day of my life than I ever have before. Amen. Looking forward to that day. But in... John, the 14th chapter, where I'm taking my main text. These is the words of Jesus Himself. Before we go into that, let us pray. Father, we're so thankful for Your blessings, for all that You've done for us. Lord, how that You've watched over us, you cared for us. Lord, You've been so good to us, and we just can't ever praise You enough. Father, I pray now that the sweet Holy Spirit will just fill this place today. Father, I ask for Your anointing as we... Uh, attempt, Lord, to go into Your Word, to bring Your Word forth this morning. Lord, give us ears to hear what You're saying this morning. Lord, let the people not see me, but let them see You this morning and, and hear Your Word. And, and let the Holy Spirit just deal with hearts this morning and draw us closer today. Father, we pray for those who are sick. We pray for Brother Danny and Sister Wanda, Lord, that You'll strengthen them today and to help them, Father. 
Each one, Lord, that's sick, Lord, and it and Melanie, Lord, this morning and others, Father, we could just go name after name this morning. And you know each one, Lord, in the hospitals, nursing homes, Father, wherever they at this morning it needs a touch, Lord, touch them. And bless we pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. As we look into the word this morning, a cure for a troubled world. And there's a cure this morning. And it's Jesus Christ. Jesus is the cure. The Word of God is the cure for this for the world today. But you know, people are not looking at the Word. They're looking at every other thing. A lot of people are looking to the government to take care of them. A lot of people are looking for, you know, whoever or whatever this morning. But our help, the Scripture says, our help comes from the Lord, which made the heaven and earth. And that's who we've got to trust in. That's who we've got to look to. And know that He is our help in the time of trouble. I know I've quoted it many times, but in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lay not thine own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct thy path. Yes, so if we will not lean, our, our understanding is not good enough. No. Even though we trust in the Lord, our understanding, if we lean to our understanding, if we lean to our powers or our, our strength, to our resources. It's not enough. No. Right. But everything that we have, every good thing comes from the Father, comes from Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that's who we've got to trust in and lean to Him. Not to our own, look at our own things, but look to Him. And He'll lead us. He'll guide us. He'll help us. When troubles come, and, I, and believe me, they come, but yet we know that we've got somebody that says, My grace is sufficient. Aren't you glad this morning that God's grace is sufficient? That God's uh, love and His mercy, His goodness, it, 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 it goes on and on. It doesn't stop. And the Scripture says, Those that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. So in this life, there's some enduring that we have to do. There's some things that we have to go through. But yet, we know that if we'll look to the Lord, if we'll trust in Him, He's going to make a way. He's going to carry us through. My, how the Lord blesses us and helps us. But let's look here in the very first part of the 14th chapter. It says, Let not your heart be troubled. These are the words of Jesus. He's speaking to the disciples here. But you know what? The word may have been right here, may have been directing it at that point to the disciples, but it still is pointing to us today. The word of the, of the Lord is still speaking to us. The same things that He said to them, He's saying to you and I this morning, let not your heart be troubled. Don't worry about those things that you can't do something about. Isn't it so wonderful this morning that we can pray? Amen. That we've got brothers and sisters and loved ones. We've got church family that prays for us. Yes, we're supposed to pray ourselves. But aren't you so glad this morning that... You've got somebody that's praying for you. Somebody that's holding you up. Somebody that's, that's lifting you up to the Lord. So that Jesus is saying, let not your heart be troubled. Even though all these things are going to come your way, you're going to face things that you've never faced before. You're going to walk in places that you never walked before. But let not your heart be troubled because I'm going to be with you. And he goes on a little bit further down in, the, in this chapter and He tells why that we don't have to be troubled. Why we, we shouldn't worry. Why we shouldn't take no thought for tomorrow. So many people worry about what's going to take place tomorrow. Tomorrow may never come. You know, just think about this day. Live this day for the Lord. Serve the Lord today. And when, if tomorrow comes, then when you get up in the morning, you say, Lord, help me through this day. Lead me, guide me, direct me. As I said before, and to plead the blood of Jesus. Amen. That blood of Jesus. There's power in the blood this morning. Amen. And when we plead the blood of Jesus over ourselves and over our loved ones, over our family, how that the Lord can watch over and how that He can take care. Yes. Many times we don't realize that we've got ministering angels that's going beside us. Amen. So many times I pray, Lord, go before me, go behind me, go to the left, go to the right. Beneath, just go with me. Yes. How many times has the Lord been with us and protected us and kept us when we really didn't even realize it? That's the Lord. That's the Lord that we serve. Oh my, let not your heart be troubled. Psalms 23 and 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. 
Listen. Is not God's Word true? Yes. Is not what God says, will it not come to pass? Will He not... His Word, when it goes out, it don't, it, it's not going to return void. When Jesus says something, we can stand upon the Word of God. You know, the Scripture says, when having done all to stand, stand you there forward. There's times in our lives that we've got to walk by faith. There's times in our lives that we just got to keep our heads up. We've got to look forward. We can't look to the left or the right or behind us. Our biggest problem sometimes is we look behind. But we need to look ahead and say, the Lord is leading me. The Lord is guiding me. The God is my help. And He is our help. Oh, He's my strength. Yeah. He's your shield. He's your butler. He's yeah. everything that you need this morning. Yeah. Aren't you glad of that this morning? That He's everything that you and I need. Yeah. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in Me. Yeah. You know, when Jesus came, when He was born as a babe, and He growed up, become a man, you know, a lot of people, the disciples, even the, sometimes I'm sure they may have doubted themselves. Is this really the Son of God? But He was. When you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. If you've got the Father, you've got the Son. If you've got the Son, you've got the Father. My, this morning, as He said, if you, if you believe in God, believe also in Me. Yes. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also. There's a promise there to you and I this morning. He said, in my Father's house are many mansions. He said, if I go away, I'm going to come again and receive you, us, unto Himself, that where He's at, that we can be also. My, there's a place that's prepared. You've got a mansion in this life. You may not live in one of the best houses. Of course, if you've got a roof over your head, you've got something to be thankful for this morning. I was thinking last night as it was pouring down rain. Thank You, Lord, for a good warm bed. Yeah. Thank You, Lord, for a good dry place to stay in. Yeah. We've got much to be thankful for. Oh, as that song says, Thank You, Lord, for Your blessings on me. Yeah. But you know, He's gone away. He's prepared a place. It's ready. I believe there's nothing lacking this morning. I believe all that's lacking this morning just for the Father to say, Son, go bring My children home. Gabriel, blow that trumpet. My, what a wonderful sound that's going to be to the child of God when we hear that trumpet sound. When gravitation don't have no longer hold upon this body, when this old, these clothes are going to drop off and we're going to rise. Oh, to meet the Lord in the air. What a wonderful time that's going to be. Church, it's going to happen. We don't know when, but we know it's going to happen. That's the reason this morning we're saying, the Lord said, let not your heart be troubled. Don't worry about what's going to take place. Just look to me and trust in me and I'll make a way for you. Where there seems to be no way. Listen, this morning, the Lord can open doors. He can close doors. Amen. Man, there's nothing impossible for the Lord that you and I serve this morning. Oh, what a wonderful Lord that you and I serve. Amen. Verse 5 says, Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Gee, listen to what Jesus said. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's only one way to heaven this morning. That's through Jesus Christ. I know there's a lot of other ways that's being taught. There's people today that's saying there's many ways. There's people who once preached the Word of God has changed and saying, you know, all these folks are going to go. No, they're not. Listen, if they haven't repented of their sins and they haven't received Jesus Christ in their heart and their life, they're not going to heaven. There's no sin going to be in heaven. 
Church, that's the reason it's so important this morning for you and I to make sure that there's no sin in our life. Amen. To repent, to call upon the Lord. Lord, forgive me. Yes. Cleanse me. Help me, Lord. I want to go to heaven. Yes. And, and here, you know, this Thomas said to him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. And how and how can we know the way? Jesus, and I will read it again. Jesus said unto him, I am the way. I am the way. The truth and the lie. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Yes. Thank God for that truth. Thank God for the life this morning yes. that, you can, that you and I can have this morning. Yes. Thank God for the joy, the peace, the assurance this morning that we can have in Jesus Christ this morning knowing that He is the way. And if we receive Him in our heart and our life that we're going to heaven. Amen. That there's no devil big enough Satan is not big enough this morning. He cannot cross that bloodline. As long as you live for the Lord, as long as you keep His commandments, as long as you serve Him and do what's right, you're going to heaven. Amen. And that's what I'm looking for, and I know that you are too this morning. Jesus said in the seventh verse, If ye had known Me, ye should have known My Father also. And from henceforth you know Him and have seen Him my, they had seen the Father. They, they didn't know that God was in Him. He was in God. Oh my. God manifested in three people, in three persons. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost this morning. That you and I have this morning. The Holy Spirit that we have to teach us, to lead us, to guide us, and direct us. Jesus said when awake, Went away. He said, I'll send another. But he said, the Holy Spirit. Oh my. He didn't leave us alone. But he's there with us. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffice us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you? And yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how say Thou then show us the Father. They had been walking with Jesus. They had saw the many miracles that Jesus had done. My, the, the, the Bible says, the Bible can't even contain all that Jesus done. The many miracles that He probably performed. The things, the teachings, the words that He said unto them. They had been with Jesus. Yet they still didn't really realize that when they saw Him, Jesus said, if you've seen Me, you've seen the Father. My church this morning, if Jesus is living within us, if our lives is producing the light of Jesus Christ in our hearts and our lives, if we are reflections of Jesus Christ, when someone looks at you, they're seeing Jesus. They're seeing the Father because the Father said, we'll come. We'll abide within you. Jesus abides within us this morning. And He's our source. He's our strength. He's our help in the time of need this morning. And we got so much to be thankful for this morning. Verse 10 says, Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me, the word, words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very works sake. He was saying to the disciples, Disciples, Cannot you believe? You've seen the miracles. He turned the water into wine. He raised the dead. He opened blind eyes. Many, many miracles are recorded in the Word of God. And the disciples were there and they saw that. And they had to know that man could not do that himself. It had to be God. It had to be the Lord. It had to be the God that was working in Jesus Christ. For Him to be able to speak, arise, come forward. 
To his blinded eyes, be open. To deaf ears, be open. Oh my, this morning, they saw all this. Yet, they didn't really believe to the fullness that they needed to believe in. But Jesus, God walked really among them and they didn't know it. It says, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that, do, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Church, we're missing out this morning. The very works that Jesus done. He said, the works that I do, you should do also. If you believe in me, if you serve me, if you live a life that you need to live, then you can do the same things that I've done and even greater things you shall do. Yes, Lord, amen. Church, we're missing out. Amen. Yes. We need more of the Lord in our lives. Yes. We need to seek Him more daily. Amen. To love Him, to serve Him, to believe, to walk by faith. And when there's someone sick among us, to be able to reach out and to pray and to believe the Lord and to see that need met. He's still the same today He's ever been. He'll be the same tomorrow as He is today. But it's up to you and I to believe, to trust in Him, knowing that His Word is true. Oh, He said if we'd knock, if we'd ask, if we believe that we can receive, have faith this morning in the Lord. Thank you, Lord. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, listen, here it is. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father. And He shall give you another Comforter that He may abide with you forever. Oh, yes. The Holy Spirit is here forever. Until we leave, until we're called from this life, until the rapture of the church takes place, the Holy Spirit is going to be here. He's doing His work. It takes the Holy Spirit to draw somebody to the Lord. When the Holy Spirit is dealing with your heart, yield to that Spirit. Yield to Him. The Holy Spirit will not lead you in a wrong way. He'll not guide you down a wrong road. The Holy Spirit will help you. He will teach you. He will guide you. He will help you. Thank God this morning that we have the Holy Spirit this morning to help us. Verse 17 says, Even the Spirit of the truth whom the world cannot receive, because it knoweth him not. Neither knoweth him, but ye know him. For he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Thank yes. God. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. How many times have you been in situations? Been in need? Maybe been praying, seeking the Lord, and the Holy Spirit just comforts your heart. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> that you get that peace from the Lord. There's been times that people has prayed for others, and the Lord give them the answer. Sister Dars, just a few weeks ago, when she came by the house. She had been praying. And she said, I got a word from the Lord. I may not say it exactly the way that she said it, but she said, the Lord give me the assurance that He was going to bless y'all in every way. And I want you to know this morning that He has. Amen. He has. And He will. He's not going to let you down this morning. I know there's times in all of our lives that, you know, as we face these situations and face these things, we begin to, if we're not careful, we begin to wonder. 
or we begin to doubt, or we begin to question. And we should never doubt, we should never question. Yes, it is, as long as we're in this fleshly body, we're, we're subject to have doubts and have fear, but you know, this morning we shouldn't. When we go back to that very first verse, let not your heart be troubled. That's right. Amen. If we believe the Word of God and know the Word of God, then we should be able to stand and say, Lord, I know that You're going to make a way. Lord, I know that somehow, you know, so many times, and I'm guilty of this, I, I try to say, Lord, well, how are You going to do this? Lord, how are You going to do that? How are You going to work this out? But we, we should just say, Lord, it's in Your hands. Amen. Lord, I know that You've done it in the past and You can do it now. Lord, that You'll make a way. And He will. He makes a way. No matter what your trouble is this morning, no matter where you're at, no matter what's going on in your life this morning, look to the Lord. Trust in Him. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God? Jesus is saying, believe in Me. He said, the works that I do, you should do greater. My, this morning... Why should we worry? Why should we fear? Because Jesus is within us. The Holy Spirit was, is within us. He's leading us. He's guiding us. He's directing us this morning. He's with you to help you in your situation no matter what it may be. He knows where you're at this morning. My, that's the God that you and I serve this morning. How wonderful He is this morning to us. He's so wonderful and so great. Verse 19 says, Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I live, you shall live also. Because Jesus Christ lives. Because Jesus Christ sits at the right hand of the Father this morning. He's there interceding for you and I. Yes. My he said, because I live, you can live also. Amen. That's why we've got to trust in Him this morning. Knowing that He's going to make a way for us, no matter what it may be. We've just got to trust in Him and know that He's always there to help us. Verse 20 says, At that day, ye shall know that I am in, the, in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. How wonderful that is this morning. Verse 21 says, He that hath my commandments, he that hath my commandments, keepeth them. He it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. Sometimes we feel like we're all alone. Sometimes I know there's times in our life we feel like, Lord, where are you? Lord, I can't feel you. That's church this morning when we've got to pray a little bit harder. We've got to put more trust in the Lord. You know, He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Jesus says, my grace is sufficient for you. He says here, I'll manifest myself unto you. You. And how wonderful it is when we can feel the presence of the Lord. How wonderful it is that when the Holy Spirit comes and moves upon us. And you know, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, when you feel when the Holy Spirit is present, you know, all fear, all doubt, you know, even pain with the anointing of the Lord is the, that pain can't stay. I know I've told this before and I'll tell it again this morning. So maybe some that's not heard it. I can remember years ago in the old church, one service, we was in the choir singing, worshiping the Lord and praising the Lord. And my shoulder had been hurting me so. I think I used to maybe had a pinched nerve in my shoulder, neck there or something anyway, but it, it was hurting so. But as we began to praise and worship the Lord, that service as the Spirit of the Lord came in, as He moved upon, that pain left. 
And how wonderful it is, church. There's times in all of our lives that we just need to pray, Lord, anoint me. Lord, let me feel your spirit. You know, that's the reason in a church service even, there's times, and I, I've been guilty myself, there's times that we hold back. Yes. There, there, there's times, different reasons that we don't feel like that we can enter in. But that's where that we've got to push our way through. Yes. That's where there's times, that, you know, as the Bible says, a sacrifice of praise. Yes. When we just have to begin to raise our hands no matter what. So many times the devil will say, well, somebody's watching you. It doesn't matter. Maybe they need to see you raise your hands. Maybe they need to see you worshiping and you praising the Lord and how the Lord is blessing you. And as you begin to worship Him, as you begin to praise Him, as you begin to magnify the Lord, as the presence of the Lord begins to move upon you and come upon you and you feel all oh, that precious, oh, sweet Holy Spirit. How wonderful it is. And you know, as the saying goes, it's better uh, felt than told. Or told, or whatever, you, whatever how you, you want to say it. But you can't explain it to nobody this morning. Unless they've experienced the Holy Spirit for themselves. Unless they've experienced that anointing. Unless they've been under that shower of the sweet Holy Ghost. You can't tell people. They've got to experience it for themselves. Church, that's the reason that we need to yield ourselves to the Lord. Yeah. We need to make ourselves available unto the Lord. Thank you, Lord. He'll bless you. He'll bless you. And I know that you have been blessed this morning and in, in, in your life, not just this morning. Praise God. In the verse 22, Jesus, Judas said unto him, Not Iscariot, unto, unto, uh, unto Jesus, Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and saith unto him, If a man, listen, if a man love me, he will keep my words. And my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make, listen, make our abode with him. Yes. If a man loved me, if a man loved me, if he keeps my words, if he obeys, keeps the commandments of the Lord, he says, my Father will love him and he will love us. He will come unto us and make his abode with us. There's a promise to you and I this morning. He'll make his abode with us. And He does. And I'm so glad of that this morning. That we can feel the presence of the Lord. That even though we may be alone, you may be somewhere where no one else is around. You may feel like no one cares, no one loves you. But there's somebody that loves you. The Father and the Son. The Holy Spirit. And they're there to help you. When you're in dire need, when you're crying out to the Lord, they're there to help you and you can feel their presence. He, he that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. And the word which he, ye hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you but the but the comforter which is the holy ghost whom the father will send in my name he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever i have said unto you so wonderful this morning that the holy spirit the holy ghost will bring to remembrance the things that the Lord has said. I'm sure each one of you at times, maybe when you wasn't even thinking about a Scripture, thinking about something, maybe you was praying, that different things will come to your mind. How that I know that different times that maybe as a minister, and Brother Danny will know, probably in, in others who are ministers here this morning, you'll know that when you're 
sitting and you're studying the Word of God when you're praying, you're seeking the Lord, that how that just different Scriptures will begin to come to your mind. Even when you're preaching, you haven't even thought about a Scripture, that the Holy Spirit will bring a certain thought or a certain Scripture to your mind. The Lord knows what you need. How many times, and I'm sure there's several of you have this morning, maybe a lot of you, you've opened your Bible and began to read the very thing that you needed. That's where you opened your Bible to. That Scripture that you needed at that moment. That's the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the Holy Spirit this morning. And what He's doing in our lives. Verse 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Here it is again. Neither let it be afraid. The peace of God. Peace I leave with you. I'm so glad this morning that He can give us peace. That He does give us peace. That there's times in all of our life that we need a peace. We're, we're, we're troubled. We're, we're going through situations. We're facing things. Jesus is saying unto us this morning, look to Me. Let not your heart be troubled. I'll give you peace. I'll, let you, I'll give you assurance. I'll give you a rest that man cannot give. I'll supply your needs. Oh, that Ephesians, I think it's 3 and 20, but my God shall supply all your needs according to His riches in Christ Jesus. According to His riches in Christ Jesus. I may not quote it completely correctly. But listen, this morning, God's got an abundance. He's got an overabundance. He's got everything that you and I need this morning, whether it's physically, financially, physically, whatever it may be in your life that you need this morning. Yes. He is the answer. Yes, he has the resources. You, he will meet those needs in your life if you'll just call upon Him. Lord. Trust in Him with all your heart. Listen, don't lean to your understanding, but trust in the Lord. Let Him help you and He'll lead you. He'll guide you. He'll direct you. He's a wonderful God this morning. He's a wonderful God. You have heard, verse 28, you have heard how I said unto you, "Go, I go away and come again unto you. If you love Me, you would rejoice because I said I go unto the Father. For My Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it come to pass that when it is come to pass, you might believe. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me, but that the world may know that I love the Father. And as the Father gave me commandments, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. Jesus was at the very end, coming to the end of His ministry here on earth. Jesus paid a great price for you and I. Not only for salvation, and that's the very most important thing this morning, is salvation. Knowing that we're saved. Knowing that we're ready to meet the Lord. Jesus wants all to come unto Him. To call upon Him. He paid a great price at Calvary for you and I. A great price. When He shed His blood, He was beat unmercifully. He was tortured. He did it for you and I. That we could be saved. That we could have a home in heaven. That we've got an escape 
from this life to a better place. But not only on the cross did He shed His blood for salvation, but in that salvation, on that cross, He made a way for our healing. He made a way for us throughout this life. That we can call upon Him as He now sits at the right hand of the Father and He's interceding for you and I. And He's saying, all ye that labor and heavy laden, come unto Me and I'll give you rest. Come unto Me. This morning I want you to know if there's trouble in your life, if there's things that you're facing that you don't seem to be able to overcome, and you need prayer, <coughs> this altar is open. Sister Karen, if you will put us, Sister Michelle sitting there. If you come to the keyboard, you play something softly. This morning, if you've got a need, We'll meet you here and we'll pray with you. Whatever it is, listen, so many times in our lives we think, well, that's, that's just too little to bring before the Lord. No, it's not. I don't care how little or how big it may seem to you. If you're a child of God this morning, Jesus says, come unto me. Bring your troubles, bring your cares, cast all your care unto the Lord this morning. Because He cares. As we stand to our feet this morning, if you're able to stand, stand to your feet. If you've got a need, this altar is open. Brother Danny and myself, and I'm sure there's others who could pray too, but we'll pray with you this morning and we'll believe the Lord that that need is going to be met. In the name of Jesus. Every head bowed, all eyes closed. Father, You know every heart. You know every need. Father, You know every circumstance. Everything that's going on in this body this morning, not only here, but all across this nation. There's needs, Lord. And Father, You're the need meter. And Father, we're calling upon You today to touch, to heal, to strengthen, to bless. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I just plead the blood of Jesus upon all those who are sick here in this service, at home, wherever they might be. And Father, I just speak healing upon them in the name of Jesus. Pray, Lord, that You'll touch and to minister this morning. Father, we need a move of Your Spirit like never before. Lord, we need You. There's people here this morning that need You. That needs a touch. Lord, we're praying, Lord, this morning that someone will receive. Someone will step out in faith and receive what they need this morning. Do you need something this morning? He's here to meet that need. We'll pray with You today. If you're facing something, you're going through something that you seem to can't make it by yourself or get through. <coughs> He's here today. He's here. Would you come right now? We're not going to hold that long, but I want to give you a chance to be able to come. Let the Lord help you today.